Welcome to this fifth module in this introductory series on FLCW radars. The past four modules have focused on sensing along two dimensions, range and velocity. This module is going to focus on sensing along the third dimension, namely angle. So the kind of questions we are going to answer in this uh, module are, uh, you have a radar, you have an object in front of it. How does the radar estimate the angle of arrival of this object? What if there are multiple objects uh, at different angles, but possibly at the same range and same relative velocity? What determines the maximum angular field of view of the radar? What does the angular resolution of the radar depend on? Recall from our earlier modules that the face of the IF signal is very sensitive to small changes in the distance of the object. Specifically, a small change delta D in the distance of the object results in a phase change omega given by 4 pi delta D by lambda. Angle estimation exploits a similar concept. Angle estimation requires at least two RX antennas. What is exploited here is the differential distance of the object to each of these antennas. So the transmit antenna transmits a signal, um, that is a chirp. It is reflected of the object and you can imagine one ray going from the object to the first RX antenna and another ray going from the object to the second RX antenna. And in this example, the ray to the second RX antenna has to travel a little longer, an additional distance of delta D to get there. This additional distance results in an additional phase uh, of omega equal to 2 pi delta D by lambda. Um, so this is the phase uh, difference between the um, signal at this antenna and the signal at this antenna. Um, so you can see here that these two expressions are uh, very similar um, and actually they are almost the same um, except for a factor of uh, 2. So uh, something for you to think about. Uh, why are these two expressions off by a factor of 2? Uh, so this figure here explains the dependence of this additional distance on the angle of arrival. The object is assumed to be far enough compared to this distance d between the two antennas uh, that the rays from the object to the rx antennas are assumed to be parallel. Uh, so here uh, I apologize uh, for this uh, uh, abuse of notation. Um, henceforth in this module um, d will actually refer to the uh, distance between two uh, consecutive antennas. So here d is the distance between the two rx antennas and uh, theta is the angle of arrival of the object with respect to the radar. And this is the additional distance that this, um, of the ray to the second antenna uh, compared to the first antenna. And uh, using basic geometry, you can see that this is a right angle triangle here uh, with the hypotenuse being d and this angle theta. So this additional distance that the ray has to travel uh, turns out to be d sine theta. So the transmit antenna transmits a frame of chirps and the data is received at each of these antennas and each of these antennas processes that data to create a 2D FFT matrix with a peak corresponding to the range and velocity of the object. Uh, so here you have the 2D FFT peak corresponding to this receiver and another 2D FFT, peak, um, 2D FFT matrix corresponding to um, this receiver. Uh, Note that the location of the peak is going to be virtually identical for both of these 2D FFTs. Uh, we've discussed earlier that the peak location is very insensitive to small changes uh, in distance to the uh, in small changes in distance between the uh, uh, radar and the uh, object. However, the phase difference between these two peaks uh, is going to be given by um, two pi d sine theta, d sine theta being this additional distance uh, divided by lambda. And uh, once you measure this phase difference uh, by comparing these two uh, signals, the, the signals at these two peaks, um, you can just invert this equation to calculate the uh, angle of arrival. Uh, if you examine this expression, uh, omega equals 2 pi d sine theta by lambda, the relationship between the quantity that we want to estimate, uh, namely theta, 
and the measured phase difference omega is a nonlinear one uh, because of uh, sine theta. So this is the first time um, in the series we are encountering such a situation. So if you will recall, the expression for velocity estimation uh, from the second module uh, is given by omega equals uh, 4 pi v uh, tc by lambda. And uh, you can see that the velocity, the um, estimated phase difference depends linearly on the velocity. Likewise, in the first module, the relationship between the IF frequency and the range is linear. Um, so if you look at this plot of sine theta versus theta, close to theta equal to zero, sine theta is very sensitive to theta. So small changes in theta produce comparable changes in sine theta. But this sensitivity decreases as theta increases. And close to theta equal to 90, sine theta becomes quite insensitive um, to theta. Hence, estimation of theta is more error prone as theta increases. Um, that is shown here in this um, figure over here. Um, angle estimation is best when the object is directly in front of the radar. Um, that is theta equal to zero. And as theta increases and approaches 90 degrees, the uh, estimation accuracy uh, decreases, uh, of course, in the presence of noise. In the earlier module, when we were talking about velocity estimation, we saw that there was an upper limit on the velocity that can be measured unambiguously by the radar. We call this the maximum velocity of the radar. Is there a similar limit on the maximum unambiguous angle that can be measured by the radar? Um, and that is what we are going to discuss in this slide. So if you imagine uh, this uh, representing the phaser corresponding to the peak of the 2D FFT, for an object to the left of the radar, uh, this phaser moves anti-clockwise when you go from the first RX antenna to the second RX antenna. Likewise, for an object to the right of the radar, the phaser moves clockwise as shown here. Uh, so the measurement of this movement is unambiguous only as long as the movement either in the clockwise or in the anti-clockwise direction is less than 180 degrees or pi radians. If that were not the case, as illustrated here, where this phaser has moved from here to here, uh, one cannot say if this movement is because of a movement of A degrees in the anti-clockwise direction or a movement of B degrees in the clockwise direction. So basically, unambiguous measurement of velocity requires that the phase change between the two antennas be less than 180 degrees. And plugging in the value of omega uh, from the previous slides um, and rearranging this a little bit, we see that the maximum angle that can be measured by the radar um, has to be less than this expression over here, sine inverse of lambda by 2d, where d is the spacing between the two antennas. Uh, so basically, the takeaway here, the maximum field of view that can be serviced by two antennas spaced d apart is given by theta max equals sine inverse of lambda by 2d. Uh, note that a spacing d of lambda by 2 between the two antennas results in the largest possible field of view of plus or minus uh, 90 degrees. So far, we've talked about a single object in front of the radar and estimating its angle of arrival by measuring the phase difference across two RX antennas. Now consider two objects in front of the radar uh, at the same range and the same relative velocity with respect to the radar, such that both these objects fall in the same range velocity bin in the 2D FFT. So this is the 2D FFT from the first antenna and this is the 2D FFT from the second antenna. So there is a single peak in this 2D FFT, but the signal at the peak will have contributions from both from phasers corresponding to both these objects, uh, as illustrated here for this antenna and here for the second antenna. So the simple phase comparison technique that we talked about earlier will not work. What is the solution? It's going to be very analogous to what we did earlier um, with the module on velocity. 
we increase the number of Rx antennas from 2 uh, and create an array of n antennas, n receive antennas and uh, the two dimensional FFT at all these antennas is going to have a peak at the same location and the signal uh, at this at these series at this series of peaks is going to create a discrete sequence consisting of two rotating phases as shown here and FFT on the sequence will show up as two peaks uh, at omega 1 and omega 2 where omega 1 and omega 2 are the rates of rotation in uh, radians per sample uh, uh, for the two objects so you read the location of this of these two peaks from the two from the FFT and then just back calculate the angle of arrivals for the two objects as shown here um, we call this particular FFT here which is performed across Rx antennas um, as the angle FFT now that we have introduced the angle FFT the next natural question is what is the resolution of this FFT that is for two objects with angles of arrival of theta and theta plus delta theta relative to the radar how small can delta theta get with the two objects still showing up as distinct peaks in the angle FFT uh, now this is something that we've done for our, our range resolution in module 1 and velocity resolution in module 2 and we'll do something very similar here for angle resolution uh, to derive this expression for angle resolution uh, all you need to remember are uh, the following an object with an angle of arrival of theta has a discrete frequency of omega given by 2 pi d sine theta by lambda d being the separation between the antennas and the criterion for separation in the frequency domain is that the, ang the separation of the angular frequencies delta omega must be greater than 2 pi by n n being the number of samples in the FFT so at this point uh, you can perhaps pause the video and try to derive this equation uh, or this expression yourself two objects with angles of arrival of theta and theta plus delta theta will have their discrete frequencies separated by this expression over here now to simplify this uh, expression remember from calculus that the derivative of sine theta is cos theta which means that the ratio of uh, change in sine theta for a corresponding small change delta theta is equal to cos theta so um, I can replace this expression here with uh, cos theta times delta theta which is what I do here uh, also recall from the properties of uh, discrete Fourier transforms that we discussed in module 2 that for two peaks to be separated in the frequency domain the separation the, the um, separation uh, of their angular frequencies should be greater than 2 pi by n n being the number of samples uh, input to the FFT which in this case is also the number of antennas in the uh, array so uh, substituting this expression over here uh, I get this inequality and then uh, rearranging this a little bit I get this inequality which is actually the expression for the uh, angular resolution of the radar also note that since n is the number of antennas in the array and uh, d is the uh, spacing between consecutive antennas n times d is actually the length of the uh, antenna array so you can say that the angular resolution uh, increases as the length of the uh, and, uh, receive antenna array increases now resolution is often quoted assuming that uh, the inter antenna spacing is lambda by 2 and uh, that uh, theta is 0 and substituting that in this expression you get this expression for the angular resolution which is actually independent of theta and the um, inter antenna spacing uh, one thing to remember is that this expression here is actually in, unit of in units of radians so you would need to multiply this by 180 divided by pi to convert it to degrees if you look at this expression one interesting thing is that the angular resolution depends on theta this is something that we did not see in the context of range or velocity so both the range and velocity resolution were independent of actual values of range and velocity the reason for this is again the nonlinear nature of sine theta 
So for two objects separated by delta theta, their angular frequencies in the angle FFT are actually further apart at theta equal to zero and come closer to each other as theta increases even though the separation delta theta is the same in both cases. Um, as you might have probably figured out by now, angle estimation and velocity estimation in FMCW radar depend on very similar concepts. Actually, the mathematical underpinnings are almost identical. So I thought it would be useful to have a slide comparing the two. Angle estimation exploits the phase change across chirps which are separated in space. Velocity estimation also exploits phase change, but it's across chirps which are separated in time. Angle resolution depends on the uh, antenna array length. Note that ND actually is the length of the total uh, is the total length of the antenna array. So angle resolution is inversely proportional to the length of the antenna array. Velocity estimation is inversely proportional to the length of the frame. The maximum angle that can be unambiguously measured depends on the distance d between two consecutive antennas. Smaller this distance, larger the theta max. Maximum velocity that can be unambiguously measured depends on the time tc between consecutive chirps. Again, smaller the tc, larger the vmax. This slide summarizes the angle estimation process and places it in context within the FMCW radar system. So you have a, a synthesizer, a synth, LO, also known as the LO or local oscillator, which generates a chirp. The chirp is transmitted by the transmit antenna. Uh, it uh, is reflected off objects in front of the radar and the reflected signal is received at each of these receive antennas. Uh, the uh, synth signal is routed to each of these RX antennas and the received signal is mixed with the uh, LO signal to create an IF signal. The IF signal is low pass filtered and sampled by an ADC. This ADC data is processed across an entire frame to create a 2D FFT grid one such 2D FFT grid for each of these RX antennas. Uh, peaks in this 2D FFT grid correspond to the range and velocity of objects. Uh, an FFT across the corresponding peaks uh, in this series of RX antennas is called an angle FFT and peaks in this uh, angle FFT directly correspond to uh, the angle of arrival of objects. I'd like to close this module with a quick question. Um, so you have two stationary objects um, at the same range from the radar and this radar has one transmit and two receive antennas. Is it possible to estimate the angle of arrival of both these objects um, using this radar? Something for you to think about. Uh, anyway, this brings us to the end of this module. I hope that uh, modules one through five have given you a reasonable understanding of uh, millimeter wave sensing using um, FMCW radars um, and uh, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed it too. Uh, we do hope to add more modules in future to build on uh, what uh, you've seen so far. Um, so till then, goodbye.